Well, hello everyone. I'm so glad you're back again. And some of you are new, welcome. I'm Nan Simonson and second Tuesday of every month with Lifestyle Medical, uh, I um, love to host this cooking class. My story is that I am whole food plant-based for two reasons. One, because I am a representative of lifestyle medicine and the four pillars of health are rest and resilience, community, all these things matter almost as much as exercise and then that fourth pillar, food. And the recommended dietary um, lifestyle is whole food plant-based. That's not a requirement. That's not something you have to shift to to be part of lifestyle medical, but that's what I do. And uh, going on almost three years now, I have been whole food plant-based. That means that anything I teach you for my recipes for longevity series is represented with foods that are completely um, not plant-based and low in oil or no oil, low in sugar and low in salt. I won't use white sugar. We'll use a sweetener and you're going to hear me talk about what I use for that sweetener and almost everything. And then salt, there's a little bit that gets in there, but every time it says optional, a lot of you are SOS free, salt, oil, sugar free. And um, great, glad to hear that. Um, hi, Vicki. <laughs> Marissa, you're gonna wanna get me back to full screen. <laughs> Sorry. Glad to know you're there, Vicki. I've known Vicki for, gosh, decades and decades. In my old life, when I was landscape designer, I designed her patio and we got to know each other even before that, so it was really fun. And then the other reason that I am focused on lifestyle medicine, lifestyle as medicine, is that I wrote a book about aging powerfully. It's living powerfully, basically using lifestyle as medicine, as well as foods as close to nature as possible. So if you don't do the whole food, if you don't do the plant-based part, do the whole food food part. And that is leaving out as often as you can um, processed foods. Foods as close as to nature as grown, no, grown, eaten as close to nature as possible uh, makes a huge difference. I'm gonna start today uh, by explaining our menu. When you um, were, when you got your email that reminded you about this class, if you scroll to the bottom, you see photos of what we're doing, but you also see the recipes. And if you copied them, you're going to have three sheets of recipes. So I'm not going to speak about the specific amounts of everything again, um, because you can print this and, and it is available to you. But on the top, uh, there's a title that says getting to know tempeh. What is that about? And it's interesting because some of you know I do group meetings every Tuesday and sometimes more often with our patients from with lifestyle medicine and One of our patients today said I have no idea what that is and another one of our patients said I use it all the time So let me talk about tempeh. Tempeh is a food that goes back Hundred, well, thousands of years because it's a traditional food in um, the Eastern countries and like China, India, and it is soy that it could be any grain though, but it is primarily soy, which happens to be one of the few legumes um, or yeah, plant uh, foods that is a complete protein, as is quinoa, complete protein. Um, and so it's a really highly nutritious food, which also by the, uh, the uh, dictates of a number of our most um, currently um, informed doctors is also something that has been shown 
to help prevent breast cancer, help prevent the return of breast cancer and prostate cancer. And so it is a nourishing food that is also great for the suppression of tumor growth. So the story is you have processed foods that are still something worth having. For example, as it relates, as it relates to soy, the least processed is edamame, right out of the pod. And um, dip it in a little sauce, pull it out of the pod with your teeth, and that's a, that's a green soybean, uh, steamed usually. Then you have cooked dried soybeans, those are a whole food, but then you have tempeh, and tempeh adds another dimension to that because it's cooked oh soy, God. sometimes it's mixed with barley, sometimes flax, sometimes um, a wheat product. I stay away from the wheat products and so should you if you are gluten sensitive. And so the one that I use is one that is um, soy and brown rice or soy and flaxseed. And it's pressed into a brick with whatever it is. So it's cooked, pressed into a brick, but then there's uh, moisture added and there's something called a, a mycelium, I'm saying it wrong, that forms on that soy and that is a mold. That is the fermentation process. So it's a fermented soy product, whole food and fermented, which means you're getting probiotic when you eat tempeh. So I thought some of you don't know tempeh. I knew it. I've been wanting to try it again and again. And every time I couldn't stand it, the, the um, fermentation process can make it a bit bitter and it's, it can have a rather strong flavor. Well, I, I found another recipe that uh, recommended as a start to steam it. I thought, okay, I'm going to try that, 20 minutes of steaming it. I steamed two pieces because you can, I like batch cooking. When I make potatoes, I make a bunch of them, put them in the refrigerator, which by the way, any starch, spaghetti, rice, potatoes, um, <laughs> tempeh, that you cook, and then you refrigerate will, most of them, almost all, will then make that starch more resistant to digestion, which means that resistant starches feed, no, that doesn't mean this, but what happens is resistant starches feed our microbiome in a number of ways, those bacteria that are in our gut that uh, produce short chain fatty acids that have so much to do with overall health for us, health and wellness. Well, they love resistant starches and the tempeh when it's cooled, same thing, you've created a resistant starch. Part of the point of a resistant starch is you don't digest it. If you don't digest it, what does that mean? That means you have a higher percentage of that food that goes in and boom, <laughs> right back out again. So in other words, it's lower in calorie density. Yes, it's true. So. Um, I went ahead and made several bricks of it, but I thought I would experiment. I started it, steamed it for the 20 minutes, took one out, left the other one in, steamed it for another 20 minutes, 40 minutes, and what did I steam it in? Just one of these. Just an old-fashioned steamer in, you're going to see this pot later, in this pot. It fit beautifully. Well, easy to do. I did two of them, but then I, I tried something else. I cook, batch cook, uh, little potatoes, Yukon gold potatoes or red potatoes, red skin potatoes, because every day with lunch is avocado sandwich. My husband loves to have very thin sliced, crispy, and by crispy we put them in the little air fry oven I have. Um, so they get slightly browned, but no fat on in them at all, no, sh uh, no salt, uh, little potatoes, just sliced potatoes, and they're so yummy that way. And so I make ahead of time a batch of eight to ten of them at the beginning of the week. The other thing you could do is smash one in a waffle iron and have a smashed potato that's really fun to serve, oh, anything over, uh, a cheese sauce, a... Um, uh, a mushroom saute. Well, here are all these potatoes in there. And, um, oh, and when I was about to cook it, 
I put in, so I've been really experimenting with the tempeh, I put in another uh, or a uh, tempeh and steamed it with the potatoes for 10 minutes. Well, that would be pressure cook in the, um, the um, instant pot. And it was perfect. So when I tested the one that was steamed for 20 minutes and the one that was steamed for 40, I liked the 40 better. Uh, and I thought, well, I'm not going to recommend you steam it for 40 minutes. So I just kind of, on your recipe, said I'll steam it for 30. And, and it's still good like that. So you can do it in the Instapot with something else you're cooking, but not something wet or you're going to basically cook it like you were in a stew. Uh, but with those steamed potatoes, it's perfect. Uh, or do it in a steamer. Um, and it reduces any bitterness and any harsh flavor. Then you just have sort of crunchy bits of cooked soy, and it's it's marvelous. So that's what tempeh is about. Well, a lot of people, actually, in this recipe that I, the first recipe I found, recommended steaming it, but then it recommended marinating it, and then later putting it in the air fryer to crisp it up. So you can do all kinds of things with it. You don't need all those steps. So I added, if you, if you haven't noticed, on your sheet at the bottom of the description, getting to know tempeh, I gave you the website, emilyhappyhealthy.com, and she uses tempeh, and so she had some wonderful recipes, but she also gave something like six to eight marinating recipes, because, and you could do this with soy, uh, oh, and that's, that was the further down the processed part that I didn't get to. You can do it with tofu, because tofu is cooked soy, uh, ground up, uh, strained, and then um, compressed so that it's a soy product, nothing done to it other than this chop and drain and compress part. Uh, but it's a little bit more uh, processed, we would say, but it's still a great food. Tempeh has much more protein even than tofu. I'm going to show you how to do this. The photo that you got the recipes with has this little package. This is one oh, here, here. This is the one I found uh, from our place called Clark's. You can get them at even uh, conventional markets, different brands. But this is Light Life Tempeh Original. This one has nothing in it but the tempeh. Some of them, as I said, say barley, um, and some have. Um, flax seed and this eight ounce package well it was on sale for 279 it's usually 379 so it's a half a pound for 379 this package the entire package somebody do the math for me <laughs> 2.5 that'd be 36 42 this entire package has about 42 to 45 grams of protein well it's teeny so if you have even a third of this package, you're getting, well, a little less than a third, uh, one serving, which is, and there's 2.5 in the container, a three ounce serving, you're getting, for only 160 calories, 18 grams of protein. That's huge. Six grams of fiber, huge. No fat, because it's a low, well, that's not true. It has 4.5 grams of fat, which is still, it's fine. It's a natural fat. I don't add oils, but I do eat fat in avocados, olives, um, soy, tempeh, etc. So there you have it. Getting to know tempeh. Um, it's very good. It's very usable. I, I um, put it on top of, I'll put it in the air fryer or put it in the oven and bake it at 400 for about 15 minutes. And it gets crispy once it's been marinated put that on a salad, put it in a wrap, put it in a burrito. Um, so much you can do with it and tiny bits of it give you a lot of protein. Then you can pile on other vegetables to add crispness and all of that. So I'm doing three recipes today and normally I give you an entire meal. You have a, a, a salad or a starter, you have the main dish and you have a dessert. Well, none of these are really a dessert, even though yummy vegan mango chia pudding sounds like a dessert, that could be a tiny dinner entree if you just aren't very hungry, 
but you got to have something and you want some substance. It is a snack for your children after school. It's a beautiful breakfast because chia is loaded with protein, loaded with fiber, loaded with the omega-3 fatty acids that are so important for all of us who are not eating, well, even if you are eating meat, a lot of the omega-3s are not available in the meats because most of the meats now that you buy that are conventional, for example, cows, for example, chickens, they're fed foods like corn and soy that are high in omega-6s but not in the omega-3s, and we want the omega-3s. So flaxseed, uh, um, walnuts um, are high in the omega-3s. In any case, this is a great snack. So this is not a dessert, it's a snack. Um, the second dish I'm going to show you, a curry, is can be had for lunch or dinner. And then the third dish can be used as a lettuce wrap, as a sandwich filling uh, for lunch or dinner, or even breakfast if you like a savory breakfast. And you know we're one of the few countries in the world that does uh, sweet breakfast almost everywhere else and I've traveled I think I've been to 38 countries now maybe 40 um, most countries when you travel and you have breakfast at a for example a hotel they will accommodate Americans and the Brits um, with some sweet things but most countries uh, especially Asian countries start savory they have soups they have salads um, okay let's get going so I'm going to start with the, the chia pudding because it sits for a while and then you, you stir it and then you let it sit for another six hours. Well, that's, the, that's not going to happen here. So we will stir it uh, just to show you the difference between when I make it and then when I stir it. But I'm serving, oh, I'm sorry, I was going to say I'm serving you one that I made days ago, but I can't serve it to you, can I? But you get to see. Uh, when I put out the little buffet, uh, you'll see what it looks like when it's actually set up. And, and um, it's lovely because it's not overly sweet. And it's, um, well, let me show you. All right, let's begin. So this is yummy vegan mango uh, chia pudding. I'm beginning with a plant milk, two cups of plant milk. This is, well, I should show you. You can use, sorry for all the banging, you can use any kind of plant milk, almond, macadamia, oat, rice. Use milk that is unsweetened and really look at the cartons because there is so much disruptive um, additives in a lot of these milks. They play them up as a health food and then they put carrageenan in them, which is, for example, an emulsifier that our microbiome hates. It's actually bad for us. All the gum gums and, and the, a lot of the gums aren't great. They're not terrible like carrageenan, but the purer, the better. The other thing you're looking for is the macronutrients. And it may not matter when you're drinking a plant milk that it has protein, if you're getting protein in a lot of other ways. I like to have soy every day. I follow Christy Funk, the oncology surgeon who is the surgeon of the stars. She has actually saved a number of stars uh, because she has breast surgeries and has um, been proactive in preventing reoccurrence when it has happened. And she recommends we have three servings of soy a day because that's how strongly she is convinced that soy makes a difference to us. So I get a soy beverage that says, da, 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 water. it's organic. So water and whole organic soybeans, and that's it. Why do I recommend looking at the macronutrients? Because this will remind you that one cup of soy milk has nine grams of protein. That's as high and sometimes higher than you're going to get in dairy milk. Well, I wouldn't drink dairy milk because it's loaded with estrogens. It's supposed to get a 500 pound calf to a 2000 pound cow in a year. I don't want to do that. It is a stimulator for, for um, 
growth that we don't really want. It's full of isoflavins, glucose-free, lactose-free. So I'm going to use this in here. I don't have to. I could use almond milk or any of the other ones that I mentioned. But I, I like, if I'm going to have this in the morning, I like to enhance the protein and the fiber. Let me show you chia while I'm thinking about it. This is chia. Little teeny grains that when they get wet become viscous, which means that they produce a um, almost like a mucosal layer. Doesn't that sound nasty? But it's not. Um, so try not to spill it onto a slightly wet sink because it sticks on everything. Uh, when I take it out of here, I'm going to um, make sure to fill this with water and soak it because otherwise I have these little seeds stuck all over my blender, things like that. Okay, so I begin with two cups. This is a two cup ball jar. And I begin with two cups of, I'm gonna use soy milk, it could be anything. All right, I'm gonna then add one cup of mango frozen mango well i let this get soft so that i can mash it down in the cup because when you buy it either you're going to buy a whole mango and you're going to want to google how do i cut a mango i've shown you in classes it's easy enough it's a little time consuming but worth it they're marvelous that's why i have this one i can't wait to eat it and then we sprinkle a little chili and lime on it oh it's just heavenly um, so you either use a fresh mango or you can buy it frozen. You'll see that I'll show you a lot of products from Trader Joe's. That's because it's four minutes from my home. I love walking into a small store. I can walk in and walk right back out in moments that isn't a cavernous supermarket with a lot of stuff that I wouldn't buy anyway. Um, and this is organic mango. It was like $2.50. And you use oh, less than or maybe just about half of the bag. Um, so it holds about two and a half cups of uh, the mango. So I let it get soft so that I can get it out easily. And it's organic mango. Now, sometimes you'll think, man, why do you go on about organic? Well, because I can't guarantee that whoever has certified this organic didn't use some of the organic pesticides and herbicides and fertilizers that are a little strong like neem oil but i can almost assure you that the ones that aren't organic have been sprayed with pesticides herbicides and um, synthetic fertilizers and i don't like that if i couldn't get organic would i not eat a vegetable for example i love artichokes and if I couldn't get it organic, would I not eat it? No, I would just soak it carefully, wash it carefully. Um, but I aim for organic as often as I can. If and and a lot of places like Trader Joe's don't charge that much more for it. I mean, it's fifty cents a package for some things that are organic as opposed to, as opposed to not. So chia seed, where do you buy it? At almost any market. And um, this one is sustainably grown, organic, and it's Trader Joe's, and it's Oh, I don't know how many dollars this package was, but not a lot. And again, full of fiber, omega-3s, and protein. All right, then I'm going to add to it date paste. The recipe says date paste or maple syrup. So I prefer whole foods. I, what is a date paste? I make my own, and it means that I just take a pound of dates or a half a pound, soak them, drain it, put one cup back into the container. I want one cup of uh, moisture in there, and that'll be the drain date paste enough to make it a cup. Wore it in my blender until blender <laughs> until it's um, smooth, and this is what it looks like. It looks like um, apple butter, and it's caramel flavored, and it's a whole food because it's dates and water. Why does that matter? Well, because you have fiber in there. You have 
enzymes, living enzymes. You have uh, your body responds to it and reacts to it in a different way than something that's processed and made in a uh, factory uh, or that has no none of its own elements in it. It goes straight into your cells as glucose and um, that's not a good idea. Okay, then I'm going to add some vanilla and I'm using vanilla extract but if you want to have fun with something and you like being, I'll say adventurous, and you don't mind investing, you can get wild vanilla powder, which is the vanilla bean opened up, seeds stripped out, and ground up like a little coffee grinder <laughs> because think of how few seeds come in a pod. And this, so this little bag is something ridiculous, like $25, but you use less, you use much less, and it's heavenly. Um, so I just thought I would show you that because some of you like to be adventurous and some of you wouldn't even consider investing in something like that and that's okay too. And then I'm adding some cinnamon and if you want a tiny bit of salt to give it a, a little bit of a snap. And I'm going to blend this and the instructions call for the instructions call for, um, and I'm sorry for the noise you're going to hear tonight because I have everything I have uses some piece of equipment um, for the ease in making it. Uh, this you could um, simply use a whisk, but you would have to, or a blend, uh, um, egg beater to blend up the uh, mango or mash it and let it be kind of chunky. All of this is possible. I'm just doing this for ease. to do. Now the recipe says pull port into the bowl and then mix the, the seeds in. You really don't want to macerate the seeds. You don't want to break them all up. But for ease I'm going to pour them in and then I'm going to blend lightly. Just kind of give it a stir. Did I turn it off? Yeah. That's the stir. And to make it pretty, I'm going to put it in a crystal bowl. Okay. Get these out of the way. Make sure that it's well blended. This is so pretty. Mm. Look. Can you see that? There you go. I do these little tilts so I can show you things, and I pour things on the floor all the time. I'm really trying today not to. Okay. Oh, nice. What is going to happen, and you're going to be disappointed. I was the first time I made this, and I make it all the time now because to me this is a marvelous base and when I serve it I'll talk more about what I mean by a marvelous base. Um, what is a little disappointing is that this is such a pretty apricot color. Look, I'm going to pull this down. Now I'm not going to pull it down because when I do it's hard for me to adjust it. But it's a very pretty soft it's hard for you to see. Apricot color. Um, and as it sits, and the one that I'm serving today, I've had, it's, it was made, I'm going to say, maybe four days ago. And it's, or five, it's darkened because the seeds are the black chia seeds, which I prefer. I want anything I serve to have so much color that it has the additional isoflavins, uh, the, the flavonoids um, from that deep rich color. 
So I don't mind dark. I like it. You can buy white mango and have beautiful white um, puddings. And you could have made this even richer. I don't know why you'd want to, but you could. If you wanted to make this a really special dessert that had some mouthfeel to it that is a little bit more like a, a, a real pudding, you could have added some a quarter cup of um, soaked cashew nuts. And when it blended it, it would blend it them into a cream. And then this would have an even more uh, a denser flavor okay and a slicker flavor so this goes away and we're going to work on the next thing which is oh no let's let's not do it that way let's do this because this is i'm going to call it our main dish even though it is um, everything I'm showing you could be a main dish. Um, what I'm making now is a, a, a curry. And if you've gone to, to, to Thai restaurants, Chinese restaurants, Asian restaurants, um, the curries are usually much more of a soup than they are a dry dish with just a little bit of sauce, like a, bra a black bean sauce or a, a hoisin sauce uh, or the light garlic sauces, those tend to clean. This is basically a bowl of sort of soupy broth with the vegetables. I'm going to begin by stir frying, uh, I'll call it dry saute, my onion. And I chopped up one onion. And I'm getting this hot. Let me feel if it's hot. Not quite. There's no, actually, I just spattered water in it, and the water is dancing. It's actually very pretty, like ice skating. So it's, um, it's warm. All right. I'm letting it sit for just a moment as the onion kind of, um, as it, uh, let's see, which one do I want? This one, okay. As it sticks a tiny bit to the pan and starts releasing its moisture and starts to caramelize. I'm not going to let it burn. I'm not going to let it overly stick. But I don't have anything in here yet. I wouldn't put garlic in at this point because garlic doesn't have that kind of moisture and it will burn. That goes in much later. But what I do have is that I have a cup of broth. I make my own broth from scraps of vegetables. That I recommend it every time I do a class that you keep your scraps of vegetables in the freezer. When you have a gallon bag full, put it in an eight quart stock pot, put water in to cover it by about two inches with maybe some flavor. If you don't have carrots in your scrap, add a couple of carrots because they're sort of sweet and nice. Um, but oh my gosh, there's so much you can put in there. And you could Google that too, or look at my website, mansimmonson.com and you'll find my um, my homemade broth there. All right, I'm going to put a little of this in. I wonder if I can get this sideways so you can see it. I want you to see the pot. You see there's a little bit of brown on the pot. It's not burnt. And the onions are getting a little bit um, brown. Well, what I'm going to do and with this induction cooker, once I take it off, it stops cooking. Okay. When I add this, it dances around. It's called deglazing. If you've done any French cooking, if you ever worked with Julia Child's cookbooks, or Jacques Pepin, or any of the old... Um, classic French chefs 
with their cookbooks or in their videos. They weren't called videos then. They have them on TV. But they would always use oil. We don't do that. We don't need to. And they would brown something and then pour in some and then pour in some wine or broth, stock, vermouth. That's they did that to deglaze the pan and just a little bit so that it bubbles up and it helps the onion uh, cook a little, become translucent, which makes it sweeter. And in just a minute, because it's cooking very nicely, I yeah, I don't know that you can really see that. Yeah, you can a little. I'm going to add the garlic. And if you looked at your recipe, you're going to think, holy moly, man, six um, cloves of garlic? Yes, sir, Reek. This broth, I always make notes on recipes that I try, and I'll Google something like best, well, best Thai curry, or you always put vegan, uh, best vegan Thai curry, and I'll look at two or three of them, and I'll make copies of two or three of them and then I study them and decide which elements of what I like. And I liked the broccoli, the, the um, garlic in this one. And then the one I keep has notes of all of the changes that I made. But in this one, I wrote, um, oh, delicious broth. I thought the broth was wonderful. Now, I, I have here a dry pan, just about a dry pan. You see how it's brown? I wonder if you could see the bubbling up if I do it again. Kind of. Kind of. Uh, I'm going to let it bubble up one more time. Then I'm going to let it get a little bit dry. And I'm going to add red chili flakes. Uh, zest of a lime. What do I mean? Get yourself a zester. You can get it on. Let me see if I can put it where you can see it better. Anyway, here. This is a zester. It's a, a, a plane. And it's super, super sharp with a very, very fine um, mesh of holes. Well, you take a line, as I did, and you make the line naked. <laughs> Kind of undress it. You see that? Used to have a skin. Doesn't have a skin anymore because I worked it. And you might see some of it falling down. Do this before you juice it. Otherwise, um, once you juice it, it's too. I've got to put a little more in. I was talking too much. It's too um, soft to really um, get the zest off of it. Well, okay, I'm going to use this later, though, so I'll use that lime. Now, I'm going to add my chilies, the zest. Let's see if you can see this. That's the zest. Uh, light, there we go. The zest. I want all of that. That's where you get some of that heavenly flavor. Grated ginger. Now, how do you grate your ginger? I had a, a, a patient, and I, I was so glad that she was honest enough to say that. She said, some recipes I won't even do because I don't want to deal with ginger. And ginger is a nub like this. It's a root. And what I do when I, when I cut it is that I use a fine grater, and I grate it. And when I grate it, it kind of pushes the skin aside, leaves a lot of the fiber behind, and gives me the grate of ginger. Well, she reminded me, or somebody told her, I don't remember who, I don't know if I did or if she just found it. Um, I think she may have found it. She knows who I'm talking about. I'm not going to the patient's name. So. And um, oh, what I just did with this is that by putting the... Um, well, what I'll finish that sentence, and that is that now she'll use ginger, and you can get garlic that way too. Trader Joe's has, and a number of markets have, in the freezer section, these little, they look like miniature ice cube trays. And in those little indentations, you have um, either garlic 
or you have ginger. Okay, now we have a beautiful um, cooked down aromatic start to the meal. Now I'm going to add, let me make sure I'm doing this properly, yes. All right, I'm going to add red, red bell pepper that I cut into little half half inch slices. I actually cut the bell pepper in half and then cut each half into thirds, laid the thirds on top of each other, cut them into half inch slices. This isn't important, you can cut them any way you want. Uh, but that's the way I did that. And then I'm going to add mushroom. Now, before I do that, let me add my carrot because I want to talk about it. Ooh. I want to see, I'm always throwing things around. <laughs> it even turned itself off. Okay. Carrots on the floor. All right. Let's get this thing back on. Gosh, do you think I broke it? I think I upset it. There. Okay. There we go. We're fine. Okay. I'm going to add the carrots to stop it from getting too hot. Let me show you the mushrooms, and actually I may add a little bit of stock because I don't want this to get too dry. Okay. The recipe calls for two and a quarter cups of stock, and I'll get to that in a minute. Shiitake mushrooms. What is that? Well, you can either buy, let me pick up a carrot or two. You can either buy shiitake as a dried mushroom like this and I buy them I buy a big package of these keep them in a big container soak them and they become a soft mushroom it's a couple of them that I soaked for two hours um, you put them in a bowl put water on them there's the back end and then you hold that water down with you hold you put a what I usually do is I'll fill the bowl and then put a plate down because they want to um, they want to float and by putting a plate on it or something on it it pushes them into the water. Well, I'm going to throw these in because I'm not going to waste them. They've already been soaked. But the first time I made it, I made it with the dried reconstituted mushrooms, which I love. And then I can squeeze out the broth which is what this was partially from these two, and I can add it to a soup. However, today I decided, or for this, I decided to buy fresh shiitake mushrooms. So I went to my local store called Clark's, and I bought these shiitake mushrooms. Trader Joe's had them, has them, Ralph's has them, a number of places do. And cut off the back end, just easily... Cut off the back end, save it for my stalks, sliced it into thinner slices, about three to four slices per mushroom, just depending on the size of the um, on the size of the mushroom. And I discovered that it's easier to cut them from the gills back because they get a little leathery and they're hard to cut otherwise. And I'm adding this together. So what do I have? Red bell pepper, carrot mushroom and this is the dry one i can't put this in it has to be soaked and i'm going to add to that uh let's see oh i'm going to cook it just a little bit and then i'm going to add to it broth so that we can move on i'm just going to put all these together at once I'm going to add to it also some light coconut milk. Now that's not the coconut milk that I would buy at the store in the, the it's not the coconut water that is sometimes sold, um, nor is it the coconut beverage. This is 
or well, I use organic light coconut milk. And you may worry about it because it's high in fat. I don't use the full fat one, but I do use it. And I don't worry about the fat in it because when you serve this, there's very little of the coconut milk that each person gets, but it flavors it the way I like it to be. And if I went to a Thai restaurant, I would absolutely order, and I still do, the Thai coconut soups. Is it Tom Ka? That is the coconut. Um, and I love them. Okay, now I'm going to cook this. I'm going to cook it for 20 minutes. Or let me see if I'm going to add my milk. Okay. And then I'll tell you, I'll show you what I've done with the tempeh that's going to go in here. All right. And there's more ingredients that we'll put in, but that's later. So I'm going to push this back. And we will revisit it 20 minutes from now. And we're going to go on. And now we're going to make the sauce for the salad. But let me show you something about this tempeh that I'm going to throw in there when 20 minutes are up. Okay. I showed you the tempeh brick. The recommendation is that you cut this into cubes and then brown it. I didn't want to take the time to brown all the sides of these little cubes. It was easier for me to take the brick, put it in a non-stick skillet. If I didn't have a non-stick, I would have used a regular skillet, but I would have kept adding a little bit of broth the way I did with this to kind of deglaze it and keep it from sticking. Uh, and I simply browned all the sides, not all the sides, I mean just the two sides. And so when I cut them, then four of their sides, two of them are brown, four of their sides are not, but I don't care. Um, I just prefer to do it that way, it's easier. And so once I browned it, can you, oh, here. Once I browned it, I simply cut them, and now they're ready to go into the um, the dish. Cubed, browned, I should say partially browned tempeh, but perfectly uh, good enough. All right, now I'm going to make a sauce. It's pretty simple. Need to get my electricity over here. All right. And this is a tiny little cuisinart. I'm making a curried cashew dressing because this salad that I'm using is a curried, um, what I call not tuna salad. So in other words, it looks like a tuna salad, but it's not. If you don't want tuna, or you're tired of, for example, you either don't, I don't mean tuna, it, you're either tired of um, the curry because you've got it in this dish and you may be having this at the same time um, of the, the week um, because I have mine almost every day in my salad. I just put it on top of the salad. I could have it as a sandwich. Um, then make this instead, and you'll look at the recipe and the recipe recommends this, then make this instead with um, mustard, just a lot more mustard instead of making it with um, with the, the curry. 
So what I've done is I have three quarters of a cup of cashew pieces. You can buy them as pieces instead of as a whole. And they're less expensive that way, a lot less expensive. And I've soaked three quarters of a cup of cashews in three quarters of a cup of water. A lot of dressings, you're going to see this a lot. Oh, no. This is very bad. Oh, shoot. Oh, okay. All right. Well, that didn't work, and I don't know why, because I even experimented, and it should have held it. So I'm going to do something a little bit different. Now let me think of what to do. Oh, I know. Okay. Give me a minute, and I'm going to repair the mess. When you spill, just throw a towel over it. Let the towel soak it up. Goodbye, spill. Thank you, towel. And we're done. So what I'm going to do now is use the same container, rinse it out, and we're going to do it in this. I'm going to add a little bit of water. It looked like I probably lost about a half a cup of water, but I'm not going to add a half a cup. I'll add a little bit, see what this looks like, and then judge it like that. Okay. And if you'll excuse me for a moment, I'm going to bring back my cuisinart. I mean, my... Um, I'm adjusting the heat because it looks like it's boiling rapidly and I, I don't want it to do that. There we go. All right. Okay. So I have three quarters of a cup of cashews, three quarters of a cup of water. I'm adding to this some garlic. And garlic as well as onions, may appear to you to be something that is superfluous in terms of nutrition. Oh, it's just a aromatic, it's just a flavor. Garlic and all the alliums, onion, scallion, shallots, um, leeks, all of those are super nutritious. But they do something that's not that doesn't have to do with their color or with actual vitamins, they do things that help us process other foods better. If you pay attention to Joel Furman, onions are one of his daily recommendations, and that means all of the alliums, not just onions. So I'm adding to this mustard, Dijon mustard, there we go, apple cider vinegar, a five tablespoons of lemon juice One, two, three, four, and five and two teaspoons of curry powder now what would i have done if i didn't want curry i'd leave the curry out the salad would not the no tuna salad will not have curry flavor and i would add more mustard to give it a little bit of a kick and i put together in here the mustard that i'm using which is far less only a teaspoon i would use possibly a tablespoon or two if i weren't using the curry and i'm going to um blend it Excuse me. And I want you to see how well cashews become a cream. If I didn't have a high power blender, which I do, because the um, the KitchenAid or the Vitamix is a high power blender, it would have turned this these cashews into a cream even without being soaked. 
but I, I in the recipe recommended the soaking because not everyone has one and um, I like the texture of it after it's been soaked better anyway I put this together yesterday I could have soaked it a half an hour an hour a little bit longer um, just to make it soft and cashews soften better than any other nut for this kind of purpose and they are so bland that they give you get their cream their fat but you don't get a lot of flavor and what I just did starting it slow will give me a dense volume down here if I had kicked it into high immediately before I created that volume it would shoot up the sides and into the top and it's much harder to clean out that way um, and much harder to um, get everything mixed I'm going to add a quarter of a cup I'm just going to try it see if it's I want it to be I want it to have a silky uh, a silky consistency I don't want it to be grainy mm, the flavor is wonderful but it's still grainy so I'm gonna let it go just a little longer sorry for this Same spoon, spoon, made all the difference. It's absolutely silky, and that's what you want. You don't want the grain. Okay, take this away and leave it away this time. And now, what we're doing is the rest of the cell. And this time, I'm using my full-size cuisinart. I'm going to put this in. Let me show you what I've created. Look. And look at That's like a mayonnaise, and that's what I was working on. And it would thicken in the refrigerator. And it will thicken in the salad. That's why I recommend that you let the salad sit a while. So I'm going to let this sit here. Did you see that I was looking at this rather than the screen? Oh, yeah, you could see it. All right. Okay. So this is what we are working with I mentioned the cashew pieces this is the way I buy them again I get them at Trader Joe's but I can get them almost anywhere raw cashew pieces not toasted not salted and this is the tempeh the other tempeh steamed because I steamed both of them and this one has flax in it See, there's flax seed in it and what I did with this well you know what I'll show you in a second all right all these wonderful ingredients in this All right, so 
I first steamed the tofu. You know what? I'm going to do a little wash. Okay. I steamed the tofu brick and then broke it up. But I want to show you so that you can see what I mean when I say break it up and, and a little bit of the consistency. Can you see this? It just breaks apart. I'm trying to describe it. Think of how to describe it. I don't know. It's very firm bits of soy that are just held together lightly. And that's all I did. So I broke it up. That was one eight ounce brick. This makes a lot of salad. I believe it's five to six cups. You could make less, but it's one eight ounce brick of tofu, and therefore um, you would have to use the other part of the brick for something else. All right. I'm also adding to it one can of drained rinsed garbanzo beans. I have in my refrigerator one quart baths of cooked garbanzo beans that I cook a pound and a half at a time. But if you don't have that, I don't want you to think that this is something you can't do. It's just as easy to get a not well, it's easier actually, to get a 15 ounce, 99 cent can of organic garbanzo beans, drain them and rinse them. And I'm simply putting all of this together. So I have the tempeh, and when I taste this, it tastes like nothing. It's mild and it's edible. <laughs> if I had tried that before I steamed it, I'd have spit it out. I would have not liked it. Um, it doesn't taste like anything that I would just sit down and nosh on. Um, not yet. All right, so then I'm going to add the garbanzo beans, and then the fun begins. We're adding chopped celery. It sounds a lot like we're coming up with a very full tuna salad. Chopped carrot. I just use the carrot shreds that you can buy in the store in a bag and then just slightly chop them better. I like the texture of these. They're crispy. When I do it on my box grater or even on the cuisinart, it has a more a, a different outcome. It's a little bit, um, it, they get more um, kind of, anyway, it's not the same. Okay. Then I have a half a cup of red onion. If you don't like onion, don't put this in. I love onion in a salad like this. And... Da, 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 da. What makes it really fun is that I have a chopped gala apple. And I want very little. Um, I don't want to turn this into a paste. I want this to be just a little bit uh, chopped up. So if you don't have a cuisinart, you don't have to worry about it. You're going to more finely chop the apple. You're going to mash up the, uh, the garbanzo beans with maybe a potato masher. You're going to chop things as finely as you can. And you'll probably have a much chunkier tuna salad, but you're going to like it that way. It'll be a little harder to make a sandwich with, but um, it's possible. I'm adding three tablespoons of water. And then... I wanted to make sure Marissa isn't writing me. Um, let me turn this down. And then watch what I do. I'm pulsing it. There. What happens is the outer is becoming the inner, and so it's working itself into a sort of black hole. And that's about all I'm going to do. I don't want it to be, let me take a look. I don't want it to be any more finely mixed than that. I love texture. 
when I take a bite of something, I want texture. Um, I'm going to leave it like this. And then I'm going to add raisins. Oh, boy. And then I'm going to add, and actually, you know what? I didn't grab my raisins. I grabbed currants, which make me even happier. Because currants, let me show you, are tiny raisin type things. They're not, it's not the same plant. One is a vitus, and the other one is a different kind of a, a, a genus. But it's dried fruit, and they're, they're just tiny. And so you get more of these tiny bits, if you're using, for example, a third of a cup, in more bites. And it, it um, spreads out the sweetness. And I love the sweetness that this salad has from the, the, um, the currants as well as the apple. And even the carrot adds a little of that. And then we're adding one more crunch to this. And that is um, a third of a cup of slivered. And these are toasted slivered almonds. And this is going to be just seconds. Done. Now let me show you. take a look. Look, can you see the texture of it? Nice texture. All right. Hold on to the blade from underneath and pour it in. You see how much this makes? Now, what do you think we do? Well, we mix them all together. We have this lovely lemon sauce, and we mix it with the solid ingredients. I'm not going to put it all in. I'm going to see what I think. The last time I made it, it was for a video that I was making for my YouTube channel. You can find that at nansimmonson.com, and it will just take you to it. There's a link. And I said to them, because it was at the end of the video, well, sort of like this would be, I said, I'm going to put in the recipe, or I'm going to, you will know by the recipe whether or not I used all of the dressing, because I knew that the dressing was going to work itself into the um, into the salad and then it was going to cool and get as I said firmer but I don't think I'm going to use it all this time I'm not sure what the difference is but this looks creamy enough to me let me taste mm. Although the recipe didn't call for it, I am going to add a little bit of pepper. And what you do when, and this is what I recommend, what you do when you cook is understand 
that there isn't a cook on the planet that tastes things the way you taste them. We all have taste buds that perceive and pick up different flavors. We also have ingrained likes and dislikes. And so when you begin a recipe like this, say to yourself, I'm going to taste it, because I almost always end a recipe with taste and adjust the seasonings. Because you may want something, a different flavor in it, to add something different. Now that I'm tasting this, I could see that I would love to add, I get a brand new balsamic vinegar, and it's from California Balsamics. I watched Chef AJ's um, uh, demonstration of balsamic vinegars that she did for Dr. Dysinger. Find that on our website and watch it. These balsamics are marvelous. Well, there's one that is Persian lime that I have. I bought three bottles and then they gave me some samples, to be, uh, two samples or three samples. And it's, it's so good. I would put some of that in here. But I think I'm going to wait, let it set, and then decide if there's anything else I want to do with it. I think it's delicious. But look, I have this dressing left, or this, and what I'm going to do with this, with the cashews and the, um, and the lemon as a start, I'm going to add some nutritional yeast, a few other seasonings, and I'm going to make this into a sort of a curry cheese sauce. Um, so I'm going to save this. I'm not going to use it up. And now let's put this together as a meal. First of all, let me finish the soup. Or what I should say is the curry. Oh, this looks great. All right. I'm adding to this. Actually, I'm, no, I'll add this first. I'm adding to this the turmeric. Turmeric, and I have it every day is something that you may want to consider having every day. I put it in my oatmeal. I have about a little less than a half a teaspoon. But uh, turmeric is something that they have shown to be an antioxidant and a um, antibacterial, anti-inflammatory. Uh, it's a wonderful food. Then I'm going to add some tamari, which is soy sauce. I use tamari, Japanese soy sauce is tamari, and most of it is gluten-free. And I stick with gluten-free because I need to. So we've added a little bit of soy sauce to that. I'm going to add the chunks of the um, tempeh. We're going to let this get hot, and I'm going to serve it up. And I'm going to add a tablespoon of lime. Remember that lime that we had the zest that flavored the sauce? Just about a tablespoon, or a little more. I am going to taste it. Taste your food, see what you think. Oh, that's really nice. All right. And you know what? There isn't a savory dish anywhere that isn't made better by sitting a while. Tomorrow, it'll even be better. So let me show you what we're going to do with this meal. But this isn't a meal. This is just three items that can be used on their own any time during the day. Probably this and the salad would be used lunch or dinner, but not necessarily. They could be used for breakfast. And I'll show you how I'm going to serve them. Oh, there was something I wanted to do. If you look at this, the broth is thin. You may want to keep it thin. I like a more clinging broth, one that has a little bit of thickness to it. So I'm adding arrowroot. I have a teaspoon and a half of arrowroot in water. I'm not even using the whole thing. And I'm putting it in here to thicken the broth. And it'll thicken it in minutes. 
You're going to see how pretty this is when I serve it. It's marvelous. Okay. So, let's get this show on the road. And we're basically almost done. I'm going to add to this. I think it's um, two and a half cups. I don't think I know. Let me put this aside. Two and a half cups of spinach, baby spinach. It's about two thirds of this bag. I could put more, I could put less. And I want this almost raw when I serve it. So, and I just used organic baby spinach. Again, Trader Joe's, but you can get it at any market. You can buy spinach at the farm store and cut it up, but you'd have to cut it up because most of the farm stores will sell the full-size spinach, not the baby spinach. I'm mixing it in, and you're going to see that this spinach, I think I want a little more, that this spinach is going to disappear. Okay. All right. So back to the shiitake mushrooms. When I said I buy them, I buy them in a bag like this. This is one pound of organic, gluten-free, vegan, forest grown, premium dried shiitake mushrooms, no GMO, certified by Cirrus, non-irradiated, and um, I think I paid $25 for this. That sounds obscenely high, but think about it. These shiitake were $10 a pound, and I used a half a pound um, to give us, what was that, about four and a half cups of sliced mushrooms. This is going to give me, oh gosh, for a pound, if I use four ounces of dried, reconstituted, that's enough for me to do a dish like this. So in other words, this is a bar of it. So I just want to let you know about that. And I got it at um, on Amazon. Okay. Let me move things to where I need them to be to serve this. So I'm going to stir the pudding, and then I'll show you what it looks like when you actually serve it. And we're going to do a lettuce wrap instead of a sandwich for the uh, salad. All right, this is the way, let me see. It's been, it hasn't really been an hour, but almost. All right, this is the way the pudding looks right now. It's really loose, but I'm stirring it after that hour to move around the chia seeds and make sure they're well blended and now it's viscous enough that they're going to stay there. Some of them have gone to the bottom. Now that's what it looks like after an hour. It's going to sit overnight. This is what it looks like when it has been sitting. See how it's sort of darkened? It's darkened. It's thicker. It's a little like eating tapioca. Really mild because we don't have a lot of sweet in here. We just had the date paste. But as I said, it's a wonderful base. And what I mean by that is I'm going to serve it. Remember, this might be breakfast for me. I'm going to serve it with some kiwi fruit slices. It's 
up here. Kiwi fruit is very pretty, but it also has this, gosh, marvelous kind of a, hmm, it, well, it's a flavor enhancer because it really kicks fruit salads up a notch. And then I have some chopped kiwi. So I have some slices, some chopped kiwi. I've got this a little bit of raspberry, just one raspberry there to add a little bit of color. I went to my garden and I got some mint. Put a touch of mint. And I'm going to throw on a little bit of slivered almond. Look how pretty this is. And it's not only pretty, but if you started eating this as a sort of a fruit salad, as a fruit dessert, you kind of wouldn't want to stop. It's that delicious. So there's our... Um, chia or mango chia salad and if you're not familiar with kiwi this is what it looks like peel it cut the ends off peel it and then cut it this way and that's how you get these beautiful I'll even lift one up these beautiful pieces okay and then I'm going to make a Lettuce wrap. Oh, that's probably way too much. And this would simply be eaten for a meal with some fruit and the lettuce wrapped up and simply eaten that way. You could put several pieces of lettuce. This could be eaten right out of the piece of lettuce. This could be put onto a sandwich the way you would tuna. And on crispy whole grain bread with lettuce, tomato, onion, pickle, um, it, would, it would adapt itself to any of that. And again, look how much we have. This is a lot of salad, and I have had mine because I had it for lunch today. What I made last week, I made, I want to say, four days ago, maybe five, and it's still great. And then, what are we going to do with our soup? Well, I like to have a curry with um, rice. So I made, before class, I made a black rice. And again, remember what I said, I like to have dark things because there's extra nutrition in all those isoflavones. And so this is a black Japanese rice. Let me see if I can get it where you can, well, it's pretty dark, it's hard to see. And I'm not going to put it in the dish. I'm going to put it on the side. Let's see. There we go. Because then I can add some as I go. So I have black rice. I simply started that in my rice cooker before class began. We're going to serve. the soup I keep calling it soup it's a curry but I eat it like a soup these mushrooms look marvelous and they are so flavorful all right and we're going to put a little bit of cilantro. And let me see if I can get the camera down to show you. I don't want to turn it. Look. Isn't that beautiful? 
And if I were to put a little bit of rice on it, I would just put a clump of rice, eat a bit of rice as I ate the broth, and then add more as I go. Okay. Let me get this back up here. And ask if you have any questions. I want to thank you for being with me. I wish I could share this with you so that you can enjoy it as much as I know I'm going to. This is the food that will help you live longer, stronger, feed your microbiome, feed your body, nourishes you with phytonutrients, phytochemicals, and fiber and protein and every vitamin and mineral you can imagine. And um, you can't taste anything better than this. Giving up, well, I don't call going whole food plant-based giving up anything. It's adding thousands and thousands of options in terms of whole foods that are plant-based to your diet. Marissa, are there any questions or are there any comments I should know about? Marissa, are you there? Oh my gosh, I'm lonely. I'm all by myself. <laughs> there's nobody there. And unfortunately, people, there's no chat. There's no running chat on this particular format or platform that I can see. I'm too far away from the camera and the computer, so I'm not a part of any of that. So I don't know who's on, which I would love to know. And I don't know what you're saying, or and I don't know if you have any questions. Marissa, are there any questions? If she's written me. Um, I can't hear you, so we're finished. We can sign off. I just texted her. I think she can see me, but obviously something's happened with our sound. Um, if you have any questions, you can write me at home to garden at, well, actually, yeah, you can write me at, well, you can write me, do this, agingpowerfullywithnan at gmail.com, agingpowerfullywithnan at gmail.com is one of my, um, is one of my email addresses. And if you have questions or comments, let me know, agingpowerfullywithnan, all one word, at gmail.com. Okay, people, I'm going to um, end the, um, the class. And again, I thank you very much for coming, and I hope you love this food as much as I do, and I hope you have a good, uh, good evening, because I know I'm going to. Bye-bye.